welcome to our INC Ask Me Anything session. Um, my name is Emily Hayes. Um, a lot of your names look familiar. I'm the enrollment specialist for the program, so I've been working with you guys uh, for some time now. Um, really excited to have you here this evening. Really excited to go through some information um, and have you meet our panelists this evening as well. So welcome. Um, and to get started, we just want to tell you a little bit about um, the Integrated Marketing Communications Program overview here. Now, the program is completely online, so what that means is there's no residency required. Um, it's very much an innovative practitioner-based program as well, um, and it's very much taught by accomplished industry experts. So our faculty, they have quite a number of achievements, um, and when you listen to our students talk, I think you'll definitely learn about that as well. The program definitely produces forward-thinking forward -thinking marketing strategists, and it's an 11 three-credit course program, and it's not cohort structured. Um, and the program can be completed in as little as 18 months. What we'll do is we'll go through the agenda. Um, first, we'll start with some student panelist introductions, so you, so you know who you're hearing from this evening. Um, we'll go through some pre-submitted questions that um, you guys submitted as well to get all of your important questions answered. And then at the end, we'll conclude with an open question and answer session. I'm very excited to introduce Matthew Cummings. He's our moderator for this evening. Um, he's a senior marketing communication specialist at Erie Insurance, and he teaches WVU um, IMC 610. So welcome, Matthew. Thank you, Emily. It's great to be here and great to meet everyone and our student panelists as well. At this time, I would ask our student panelists to uh, introduce themselves. And before they do, um, Emily mentioned at the beginning the faculty uh, that teach in the IMC program are very accomplished uh, professionals. And you know what else is really interesting and sometimes an eye opener for students, especially new students, is that they are learning as much from other students in the classroom as they are from their instructors. And I think our three panelists tonight uh, really are, are great examples of that. And, uh, and, you'll, and you'll see that as they introduce themselves. So I would like to ask Debbie to start. Debbie Cruz is a head writer and editor for University Relations uh, at West Virginia University. And Debbie, if you could share a little bit of information about yourself. OK, sure. I'm actually at West Virginia University Potomac State College, which is their Kaiser campus. And of course, that's in West Virginia. I've worked as the uh, writer editor in, pu in public relations and marketing specialist for 18 years in the uh, communications department there. And I truly enjoy writing about the success of our students, our alumni, staff, and our faculty. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in 2015 in English from WVU. And after a year, I began thinking about a master's program. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to go into. And I visited my daughter in Morgantown one weekend. And we talked about it. And she had graduated from the IMC program, I think, maybe back in 2014 or 2010, somewhere around there. And uh, so I looked it up. And uh, after looking at the program and seeing what all I could take and what all I could learn, I enrolled this past summer. Excellent. Thank and you, it, Debbie. Uh, sure. Our second panelist this evening is David Hovis, and David is communications manager at uh, Team Penske Racing. David, if you could share a little bit more about yourself and what brought you to the IMC program. Sure. Thank you very much, Matthew, and, and thanks for everyone who, who joined the panel tonight. Uh, like Matthew said, my name is David Hovis. I handle all the communications and public relations for the uh, sports car program uh, at Team Penske. We also compete in NASCAR. We compete in IndyCar. Uh, I've worked on both of those programs uh, in the past uh, across a number of drivers. Uh, I, I graduated from UNC Charlotte in 2001 with a uh, degree in history and just somehow fell into motorsports. And I've been in motorsports uh, ever since. Uh, and having a, a history background or degree and not necessarily one 
devoted to communications or my chosen field, I always kind of second guess myself on a number of decisions. So I felt like now was the time to go back to school, use my uh, experience to get into a master's program to um, kind of expand myself in, in my, like I said, in my current field. And after some uh, quick searching, I found uh, the highly regarded program at WVU. So uh, I'm just finished up my second class. So I'm a pretty new student. Uh, I've found that it's uh, been exactly what I was looking for, and uh, I'm looking forward to the second, the next year starting. Great, thank you, David. And uh, finally, Alexandria Savage Davis. Alexandria is a reporter at CN2. And Alexandria, if you could share a little bit more about yourself and what brought you to the IMC program. Absolutely. So I'm Alexandria. Nice to meet you all, kind of. Um, so I live in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I originally got into the program because I was living in Parkersburg, West Virginia. and it's a very small town and there wasn't much to do after living in Myrtle Beach for 12 years. So I figured what better to do than continue my education. Um, I started in the program not realizing uh, how much IMC actually was intertwined in the news business in, in terms of building a brand, you know, marketing yourself to a specific audience, marketing your product, which is the newscast to a specific audience. So I just kind of fell into it and the more I took classes, the more I learned, the more connections I made the more I was able to kind of impact my following and I was able to triple my following in one year I went from well actually more than triple I went from like 200 followers and likes on my fan page to over 3,000 so it was kind of really amazing to be able to see these different uh, concepts and techniques come into play and actually improve my abilities as a reporter um, I as I said, I'm from Chicago. I lived in Myrtle Beach. I graduated from Winthrop University, which is right here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We like to call it Rock Thrill. Um, and I've worked in news for about three years. I started in Myrtle Beach before moving to Parkersburg, West Virginia and working at WTAP News for a year. Um, I moved back to the Palmetto State because it was too cold up there in the Mountain State. Um, and now I'm here working as a newscaster and doing some producing. I get to do a lot more in the community and I love it. And I'm, I've almost finished with this program, God willing, I'll graduate in May. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions, I'm here. <laughs> Excellent, thank you, Alexandria. And uh, thank you all three of uh, the panelists tonight for spending some time with us. Uh, Amber and Emily had asked for uh, some questions, some pre-submitted questions from a number of the attendees and want to thank you all for uh, submitting questions. We have about uh, 12 pre-submitted questions tonight and uh, what I'll do is uh, is go through and, and, and throw a question out to one of the panelists and then I'll also invite the other panelists to chime in as well if they have something to add uh, before we move on to the next question. So. Uh, with that, we'll get started. And our first submitted question is uh, is for David. David, is the program manageable if you work full time, say forty hours a week? I would say absolutely. And I, I'll, I'll preface this by saying, in my job, traveling most weekends with the whatever race series I was I was working in. I work way more than 40 hours a week. Uh, I get about a day and a half off every week during during the season. And it's absolutely a program that, that's manageable if you work full time. I think that's one of the beauties of, of online classes is that you aren't under any immediate time constraints to, to a certain degree. Uh, I'll say that that doesn't mean the program's not time consuming because it certainly is. But if you're good at time management and you can schedule your week out properly, then there's really no reason why you can't find the time to do the required work. Um, as I said, I travel most weekends. Uh, Monday is my true day off in the week, and that's the day I devote uh, most of my time to finishing up the weekly writing assignments, and they, those are typically due on Mondays, and it sometimes seems like it's last minute, but um, that's the day I can I can devote you know 10 hours to finishing up whatever the uh, assignment is for that week. But again, it's really just figuring out what's best for your schedule, uh, mapping out your week, 
uh, based on your uh, your workload and the holes you had that you can devote to your schoolwork and staying dedicated. Thank you, David. And and that's a good point. It's something that uh, that I'd also like to mention. the The program is set up where once you get that routine in the first course, um, you'll be able to carry that forth uh, through the rest of the program. So each course. Uh, is set up the same with the same deadline structures, and so one of the one of the the nice things is once you get that routine in place, then you're able to to manage balance family and work and and your school obligations. Uh, anyone else have anything to add before I move on to the next question for Alexandria? Uh, hearing none, I will. Roll up question number two. So, Alexandria, what advice can you share? Uh, that will help me be successful in the program? Well, um, making sure you do your own research when you're entering a new class, really utilize your resources. Each professor will suggest reading materials, but it's up to you to make sure you fully understand each con uh, concept. Um, I don't have a background in the market in marketing or even business, so most of the technology and the terminology was foreign to me, so I really had to <laughs> Google everything, you know, look up different studies and really make sure I understood each term and each concept. Doing my own research, being my own advocate with the professors really helped me soak in the information and it required a lot of extra hours, but if you reach out to the professors, they're normally really good about getting back to you and when they see you want to learn and you're specific about your needs and like very specific in the questions you're asking, they're usually very helpful and willing to go above and beyond. Uh, when I met one of my professors, um, Ms. Bonnie, at Integrate, I, I apologized for all the tedious emails and she was like, no, you, you were just hungry to learn. And so it was kind of interesting putting faces to names, but I don't think professors, well, I'm not gonna speak for professors, but my, my professor, Ms. Bonnie, did not get tired of my qu questions and uh, Professor Cummings, I'm not sure if you did, but you experienced them as well. <laughs> Not at all, and that's really what differentiates uh, what I would say good students from great students is great students really approach uh, a class wanting to learn uh, rather than just wanting to get a grade or just get the three credits or just, um, you know, check this box on degree works. Uh, so really it's that hunger for learning that really sets apart great students from, uh, from the good students. Uh, so I appreciate you sharing that answer. Uh, anyone else want to uh, share any advice before I move on to the third question for Debbie? All right, Debbie, you're up. Uh, are you going through the program in two years or are you planning to extend your time? And would you have done the, the schedule uh, any differently? Uh, that's a good question and actually, uh, I just started the program this past summer, so I'm still in the program, and I have a daughter who completed the program in two years, while also raising two young boys and starting a job just prior to graduating from the program. So, in order to help answer this question, I asked her about that as well, and she was saying that with just a bachelor's degree and no prior experience, that was, it was hard to get a job in the marketing field. And that's when she enrolled in the INC program that it offered credibility and experience that led her to getting her first professional marketing job. And since then, it has helped her grow in her career. And she has a full understanding of integrated marketing as a whole and how the pieces of the integrated marketing puzzle all fit together. And also, by the time I complete my classes in the spring, I'll still have six more to go, which includes the cap set. So, yes, I did place myself on a two-year plan, and if everything goes smoothly, I'll graduate in the fall of 2019. I think the one thing that I wouldn't do that I did this past year is I wouldn't do a um, class in the uh, summer if I already had plans. Because by the time I had enrolled in the class, I already had three short vacations planned, and each one of them fell within the time period of the class. 
and the class does take a lot of research and does take a lot of work, but you learn so much and it's all enjoyable. But that's basically the only thing I would have done differently is not to have planned a vacation during my class time. Good advice, Debbie. Thank you. Anyone else want to share anything before I move on to the next question? I, I, would, I would say that I would recommend trying to get the program done in two years just because of the routine that you find yourself getting into as far as you're going back to your time management and the way the class builds classes build on themselves starting with IMC 16 and moving forward so extending it or taking taking time off to me um, would be uh, would not be beneficial because I, would, I feel like I would maybe lose some of the stuff that I've been learning and I like the compounding uh, process of, of the program. Thank you, David. Alexandria, I think Alexandria. Yes, I would recommend kind of going at your own pace. Um, I, for one, have a very sporadic work schedule. I'll work 40 hours one week, 60 the next. It really depends. So for me, doubling up didn't happen until uh, this past semester. And that was something I was really afraid of because, you know, all of this IMC business was new to me. So each course required so much research for me. And I'd say know yourself and know how comfortable you are with the courses you're going to be taking before you make the decision to double up in order to get the program done quicker or to, you know, take one, take a semester off. You really have to know what's going on in your life. Um, and make that decision based off of that because each class is going to require some extra work. It's not something you can just sit down and do four hours a week. Um, it, it definitely takes time. Well, at least for me, it did. So I would just make sure you, you know, because these grades don't go away. So just make sure you're comfortable as you're taking the courses and um, know yourself before you make the decision of doubling up because it's definitely quite a different course load when you when you double up. It's, it's a lot more work. I'm going to stay with you here, Alexandria, for uh, our fourth question. Uh, speaking of the work, what's the best way to get uh, to start off on the right foot? I would say don't get behind. Get ahead on your work when you can. Read the professor's notes. Um, there's a course update section, and by golly, that is one of the most helpful sections on Blackboard that I've seen. Um, I'll work on something. I've totally scrapped my papers multiple times after reading those course updates and restarted. So making sure you have the time to do that, because if I sat down the night of assignment and tried to get it in, I would not have the grades I have now. So I would say get ahead, um, read the notes, do your own research, as I've emphasized many a times, uh, read all of the directions, because you may see, think you like understand a concept, but then after, you know, doing your own research and reading the text, there may be an example of what something should look, look like. And after reading certain notes, you may have thought it was something else. So make sure you read all of the directions and look at all the diagrams and keep in touch with your professors. Thank you, David. Debbie, anything to add here? The only thing I would add to that is time management, and that is so important with this program. Yeah, that's good advice. Self-motivation and time management really um, is what it's all about. No, nobody is going to be saying, hey, remember that assignment. You got to do that tonight. Uh, and so that is certainly a key. Uh, next question is for David. And it is, uh, what are the support systems that are available for, for students? Well, it goes back to what you just mentioned, kind of self-motivation and self-responsibility. There are a lot of support systems and resources, but the student has to, to want to use them and has to, to initiate the communication either with your professor, with your advisor. I've, I've even uh, had a phone conversation with the, uh, with the online librarian on how to access some of the research articles and journals that I was struggling to try to find. Um, and also uh, the student-led section of the discussion board, which you'll see once you get into the program, uh, is always, it's, it's an underutilized area for me 
as, as it relates to both the classes that I've been a part of. I think it's uh, an area where I want to get my classes in the future to utilize more. Um, the, one of the biggest adjustments for me coming from a traditional classroom setting many years ago to online was kind of the classroom interaction and being able to feed off what's going on uh, with the students that are around you. Uh, and I think the discussion board area that's dedicated just for the students to, to talk about the class is uh, a great resource for uh, whenever you, you get stuck on a, on a topic or an assignment. And it's a, it's a great place to, uh, to also network while you're going through the course. So I think that's an underutilized portion and one I'm, I want to see grow in the future. Thank you. Uh, Alexandria, Debbie, anything to add here? All right, hearing none. I, I will also add that, um, and, and you see them there, uh, Rick is the technology specialist for the program, and he's always uh, available and willing to help students through any issues that they may be having with the learning management system. Uh, WVU also has uh, IT services, which can certainly help um, even with, with personal computer issues. And Amber Novotny is the uh, online student advisor, success advisor, and so she will schedule advising appointments with each student and really help you uh, plan your, your way through the program. And so uh, it, it's very beneficial that we have these dedicated resources uh, for our online students. And so you'll certainly have uh, great interaction with your instructors, with your fellow students, and also with the program administrative team uh, to help you along the way. Our next question is for Debbie. And it is, uh, what have you enjoyed most about your program experience so far? Well, because technological advancements change so quickly and affect everything around us, I believe that even after 18 years of being in this business, I still have a lot to learn. So I would have to say that learning about changing technologies and how it affects social media, the digital age, uh, marketing campaigns have really kept me interested in the IMC program. Uh, and I think what I've enjoyed most about the whole experience is probably also one of the most demanding things, and that's the classes themselves, because they are intense and they do demand a lot of your time, but the rewards and benefits of what you learn are so extensive and so beneficial. I mean, you learn from your research, your instructor, and from your other classmates. And that's, that's always great. Uh, I like gaining the experience that the other classmates bring to the classes, uh, learning about the marketing strategies and tactics that are covered in the program. And it, it, it's giving me a deeper understanding of each one and how they fit together as a whole for integrated marketing campaigns. So I would have to say that's you know, that all combined is probably what I've enjoyed most. Excellent. I know, Alexandria and David, you probably have something to add here. Yeah, like I said, my uh, everything I'm learning as far as tactics and concepts and everything, it, it's very new to me, even though I probably knew more than I realized just based on the the field that I have chosen to be in, but it's yeah, it's it's amazing how quickly you can you can learn to. I, I I never thought I would be able to pick up on some of this stuff in an eight week course, and the way um, the readings are laid out and the way the assignments flow, it's it's, a, it's really an enjoyable process. It I I totally agree with David. I've learned a lot. I really had no idea what IMC was too much before entering the program. I in at Winthrop a lot of the IMC students and broadcast journalism students will share a lot of the classes. So I'd heard some of the concepts and I was very interested in the marketing aspect of media. But actually getting into the IMC classes and going through the program, I have learned a lot. And it's very helpful in my Thank you. Uh, next question is for David. 
are the instructors readily available outside of the traditional nine to five workday? Uh, the instructors are, are always responsive and available, uh, but you have to remember that they're also very busy too. So they may not be available immediately. I've had to schedule calls with some of my professors, with Amber. So again, it kind of goes back to time management. It's not really feasible to expect them to be able to answer a call if, if you have an emergency. Uh, so don't allow yourself really to, to work up until the last minute and then realize you need your instructor for something um, when, when proper time management would have would have helped you in that situation. So work ahead uh, to minimize all the 911s, but yes, they're they're all very responsive on on email and uh, send them if you if you feel like you need to speak to one of them, send them a quick email. Try to schedule a call, and they're usually available not immediately, but but fairly quickly. So I've, I've had no issues trying to get anything answered from either Amber or any of my instructors. Excellent, thank you, David. Uh, anyone else want to add anything here? It's a pretty straightforward question and uh, David gave a good answer to it. Debbie does. Uh, I just wanted to add that the instructors I have had so far have really been great. I know uh, several months ago when the hurricanes hit Florida, our instructor emailed and said if anyone needs any time because of students being from all over and we had a couple from Florida and he, he let them know if they needed more time for their assignments that they had it no problem so and, and they do they give great feedback on your assignment and that's all yes I can be attached to that um, here in South Carolina I remember our Wi-Fi was out and the electricity was going in and out during the hurricanes and I emailed my professor panicked. I was like, listen, I, my assignment's going to get done tonight. And it was a couple of days early. And he was like, that's the last thing you're, you should be worrying about. Your safety is my concern. And then he sent out an email to the entire class saying, you know, we'll be on standby. Just, you know, check in with us. And I just thought that was so thoughtful for him to want us to check in with him, despite the fact that we had assignments due. Nothing, everything was fine and it all worked out. But I just thought that was amazing. Thank you, Alexandria. Our eighth question, what would you wish you would have known about time management prior to beginning the program? And I'll uh, throw this one out to Debbie first. That is a really good question. <laughs> uh, in my first class, I struggled a little bit with the time management because I did not realize the extent of time it was going to take. But now once you get used to the assignments being due every Monday, discussions due every Wednesday, responses due every Friday, that becomes a great schedule. And following that schedule does definitely help because you know without a doubt that deadline is not going to change if it's due then. And then you plan your time around that. So although it took me the first class to really get it down, and I won't say that I have it down completely, but uh, I'm doing much better at it. Uh, David, do you have something to add there? Sure. I was just going to say, no going in, that it is very time consuming. And, go and prepare yourself. I think it was written out in the student manual that we received a plan on, it could take less, it could take more than this, 10 to 15 hours a week per course. So as long as you come in with the mindset that it's going to be work, it's almost going to be like a part-time job, uh, and with the schedule that's laid out like, like Debbie just explained, uh, I, think you'll, I think you'll find that you'll be, you're able to move at a good pace and not have to to work up to the last minute. Alexander, do you have anything to add to the student nearing the end of the program? I do. Um, you guys can do this. Anybody can do this as long as you stay focused, stay on top of your assignments, and keep um, doing your own research and communicating. If you don't understand something, don't just think, oh, if I just skip this week and like get a okay, great on this one, I'll be able to pick it up next week. No, if you don't understand something, 
tell your professor, ask your classmates. Um, I've reached out to <laughs> classmates um, before on Facebook, and we've had these discussions before submitting our assignments. <laughs> um, but it definitely helps to communicate and make sure you really understand an assignment. Just don't get left behind. Give yourself time to not understand something. Like if you know you have an assignment coming up, I would probably get it done the day before and just go back and look at it with fresh eyes the next day and reread the directions because I've written a paper and then I've gone back the next day and looked at the directions and realized I missed something. So just don't try to rush yourself. Give yourself time and make sure you understand. That's good advice. And I'm, I'm going to stay with you here, Alexandria. What's your uh, favorite part of the program? Integrate West Virginia. I'm not a West Virginia native. I lived in the Mountain State for a year, but a weekend in Huntington changed my perspective of the state for sure. Uh, and, and about the university and the program, I got to meet my professors, and all of a sudden things just seemed less foreign and scary. Um, while sometimes when you're working on an assignment, you question yourself, um, I was able to speak with experts in the industry, talk to my professors, um, and really understand that if I wanted to leave journalism today and start a career in IMC or marketing, I would be able to do that. I feel like every other job interacts with the IMC program somehow now in the age we're living in. So I feel like it kind of reaffirmed, okay, you can do something with this. You do understand what IMC is and you can do something with your master's degree if you want to stop reporting today. Because I understood how it worked in terms of news and how it was helping me build my brand and my station's brand. But like knowing that I understood it enough based on you know speaking to my professors and listening to the speakers at Integrate to where I could start a whole new career if I wanted to, that was kind of eye-opening for me. And I really enjoyed uh, learning about uh, virtual reality and augmented reality and those kind of up and coming forms of media. Thank you, Alexandria. It, it really is a great conference and actually this year is uh, coming back to campus uh, at WVU August 1st through the 4th. And uh, if you go to the website, there are a lot of great activities uh, built into to this year's integrate some new things as well for those of you that have attended in the past. Uh, Anyone else want to add anything here before I move on to the next question for Debbie? All right. Our 10th question, what surprised you most about the program workload, Debbie, in your in the classes that you've taken so far? Um, I would have to say the amount of research involved in the discussions and homework assignments were a bit of a surprise. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love doing research. Uh, and there is a lot of research, but you learn so much. And you just need to be prepared and manage your time and be able to handle that. The research for me actually kind of became a game. And I started wondering, okay, what am I going to learn from this week? And what am I going to learn next week? And this also extends to the classmates and the research they did for their assignments as well. Uh, the workload, Excellent. I mean, anyone else the have master's anything to add here in terms of uh, surprises around the workload? Uh, there's certain classes, I would say, that have a heavier workload, and I always read my syllabus the first day. Um, and kind of see what's coming because I guarantee you I've looked at a couple and my heart's dropped, you know, thinking of, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to understand the concepts? But as long as you do those readings, you will make it. But my goodness, some of the classes are definitely more strenuous than others. Yeah, I would, I would agree with what Alexandria said. I'm like again, I'm only I've only just finished my second class, and while the workload can sometimes seem a little daunting when, when you read the syllabus and and see what all is required of you, but the the coolest thing that I've found with both of the classes 
is that I can apply any any marketing strategy from anything that is a passion of mine. Whether it's I love to run, you know, I love other sports. I've been able to to pull something from that as as uh, my example that I use either for the discussion board or for the writing assignment. So while the the syllabus may be a little bit intimidating, just know that there's always a way uh, that you can, and you may not want to do that. You may want to to try to focus on something else that to, you're not super familiar with to help yourself grow. But uh, I always found that I was I was always able to to go back to something that I was really passionate about and maybe even lean more towards a field that I hope to, to get into once I graduate with a master's degree uh, to kind of to make things a little bit a little bit easier and to make things a little bit uh, more seamless. Thank you, David. You know, one thing I often tell students in the intro course is uh, obviously to look at the entire course and all that's required so that you can start to look at the assignments and how they fit into the context of, of the content that we'll be covering and also of the final project. But uh, in doing so, don't become overwhelmed. The courses are week to week. So you're going to do a discussion, you're going to do an assignment every single week. Uh, and so while it's good to look at the entire course and the workload as a whole so that you gain that context, um, everything moves on a week-to-week -week basis and all of those deadlines are the same. And so uh, that would be some advice that, uh, that I would share. All right, we're nearing the end here. And so hopefully you're uh, also, as we've been talking, thinking of some other questions and uh, you can use the, the chat window here as we get into the 12th question to, to ask those. Um, but uh, this one is going to Alexandria, and it is, what has this uh, program taught you about IMC? And, and you had mentioned earlier that uh, you came to this without a lot of knowledge around uh, integrated marketing communications, right? Absolutely. So this program has taught me everything about IMC that I know because I knew barely anything. Um, I'm a reporter through and through. Journalism is what I know. Um, social media a little bit, but I didn't understand w what kind of things I could be doing, you know, with um, the knowledge that the program's given me. I joined the program because at some point I want to start a nonprofit, um, but I want to be able to use my brand as a reporter, anchor to do so. The program has taught me how to learn who I'm currently reaching, how to target them, how to uh, create more interactions on my social media pages, and um, how to or why that is beneficial and it's also taught me how to utilize my time to reach a specific audience by how I'm crafting my message so that's been very helpful and I've been able to um, communicate some of those ideas to our station's parent company as well so that that has been nice because I've had them do more things on the website they're doing different things on social media and I've become more of an asset to my company. So it's nice when you're able to, you know, help a brand you care about as well. Anyone else want to share uh, something that the program has taught them about IMC? Uh, absolutely. And the last class that I took was brand equity and management and just speaking specifically about that class, um, in that class, you'll do what's called a brand audit, and I won't go into all that, but uh, that's something that I'm taking to Team Penske to to utilize not only for the Team Penske brand, but also the brand of each one of our drivers uh, as almost kind of a reset. And, uh, and again, it's, it's what it is. It's an audit to make sure that we're uh, positioning ourselves and our drivers the right way according to what they're what their passions are and what their uh, what their points of differences and, and points of parity are. So that's been one thing, uh, not to get too much into the details, that I've really enjoyed learning from the IMC program. I would also like to comment just a minute about uh, things you learn about audience insight and Targeting different types of audi audiences are is valuable and is very helpful when you do have to target 
different types of audiences. And gaining information through surveys, different types of surveys, whether they're online or interview surveys, has also been helpful. Um, a lot of what I've already learned in the program, even though I've just finished three classes, I have been able to use a lot of this information in my job as well. Excellent. Thank you, Debbie. And all three of the panelists really mentioned that um, almost immediate impact on their current work. And I often tell students in the intro course to put their pursuit of an IMC program. So often students think that they have to wait until they actually earn the degree to put the pursuit of a master's program on your resume from day one. Um, that can really be a differentiator and, often, and also share uh, what you're learning with your boss and with your coworkers. And uh, it's amazing how many students have really benefited professionally right out of the first course um, from, from doing just that. We've reached the end here with, uh, with question number 12, and I'm going to uh, toss this one out to David first and then open it up for anyone else uh, who wants to uh, chime in. Uh, and that is, in what ways, it's a related question, has this degree helped you in your career? Sure, like I said, I'm, I'm only two classes in, nine more to go, but it's definitely given me more confidence uh, in the marketing and communications field right now in motorsports, but hopefully it's going to open more doors for me uh, in the future. Like I said, I don't have a, a background in marketing and communications, uh, so this has shown me that you know some of the time I'm I'm on track with some of the decisions and some of the programs we do and sometimes you know maybe we should have or could have gone in a different direction but it's it's the confidence for me to to uh, suggest things to my boss to suggest things to the whether it's NASCAR IndyCar and so whatever series we're we're racing in that confidence uh, really helps you grow as a uh, as a public relations professional or whatever you decide to do. Anyone else want to share about career impact? Um, well, I work for a news station that is owned by a telecommunications um, company. So I'm able to now speak up in meetings, like David mentioned, he's able to talk his boss with more confidence. Um, I'm able to present ideas to my boss and she'll literally invite me in to sit in on these meetings about our website, about different concepts. We're starting a new show and I've suggested things that she likes and we've now started streaming our whole entire show online um, and on social media. So there's some new things they're willing to try and I'm able to sit in on the conversation whereas my position is reporter and that is not in the job description, I assure you. So I've just been kind of, kind of been able to transition into more of a marketing role as well and I've got a lot more access to understanding my company and having some say, which is very interesting. Thank you. 